What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to break down one of the most important aspects of filmmaking, and that is pre-production. My name is Alex Arfadi, I've been a director and a DP for over eight years now. And through my filmmaking journey, I have developed a foolproof pre-production process that has not only helped me become a better filmmaker, but it's helped me finish my films. So today we're gonna to break down this entire pre-production process, and I'm gonna take you guys through every step of the way, through the interview questions, the mood board, storyboard, shot list, and even the scheduling to help you guys properly schedule your film. So let's get into it. So this video is primarily about pre-production for documentary, but a lot of the same principles could be applied through any filmmaking genre, whether it be narrative or documentary filmmaking. I listed all the chapters down below, so feel free to skip if you guys wanna to go to a very specific section. But I, I highly suggest you watch the entire video from start to finish, because even if you know, you know about some of the processes or some of the things that I'm talking about, I think that it's still smart to kind of listen to them and, and develop your own process. Again, this is my technique and my way of doing pre-production. But in knowing my way, you might find a better way or you might find a way that works best for you. So keep that in mind as we go on. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So to start with, what I use for all my creative aspects of pre-production is an app called Milanote. I think Milanote is great. It's, a, it's an app that I've been using for a few years now. They're not sponsoring this in any way. I just thought I'd let you guys know that. But it's just a great app that I've found that has been really, really helpful for the creative aspects of my pre-production process. Now, things like finance and budgeting for my productions, I don't use that. I, I typically use something like Google Sheets. But everything like shot list, mood board, storyboard, and even interview questions, I like to have it all on, on this Milanote app. And I'm going to show you guys how I do all of that stuff throughout this video but my first step in my pre-production process is to do a pre-interview and i think that's so important for a number of reasons number one it's important to kind of break the ice and make sure you kind of get to know your subject before you jump into an interview and throw lights and a camera in their face i think that's super important the other reason why it's important to do a pre-interview is because there might be some stuff that you can try to research online but you just won't figure out it's really important to ask questions that are going to help you tell this story and, and at least help you start to develop an understanding of how this story can be played out. So what I typically do is I'll record the conversation using Riverside. And the reason why Riverside is great is because you're able to record the entire interview, you and your subject, and you're able to record all of the audio and get it transcribed within seconds. And the reason why having a transcription of all of that audio is so important is because if you want to reference back to anything, you can quickly just type in the search bar exactly what you're looking for and find exactly where that place is in that conversation. And then take that a step further, you could copy and paste exactly what your subject is saying, an exact quote, and put that in your script or your outline or even your storyboard. I've actually done pre-interview calls without recording them. And there was a lot of information that I just forgot, or like I didn't have specific names and I would have to like text them or go back and it would just prolong the process. And I could tell that that would frustrate my subjects. And you don't want to do that, especially when you're working with a high profile athlete, you want to make sure that you're making this as smooth as possible for them. And the best way to do that is to record it and make sure that you have it kind of stored away and you could reference back to it. And if you guys want to check out Riverside, I have a 15% off discount code that I'm going to leave in the description down below. I highly suggest you guys check that out and use that for your pre-interview calls. Now, really quick, let's go into my pre-interview questions. I usually organize my pre-interviews by a profile. or just have a little picture of who I, I'm doing the pre-interview with. I'll have their name, their occupation, and maybe something like how they pertain to the story. Then my first set of interview questions, I like to just open up the conversation by saying, hey, how are you? How's your day going? How is everything going? You kind of open that up and then you start asking them the questions. And I usually tend to start off with, you know, the more surface level questions. And then I'll go into the more deeper questions as we progress into the pre-interview call. And as I'm kind of developing this, I might like go ahead and add some notes and then I'll write down characteristics either as I'm in this conversation or after the conversation. And after doing this pre-interview call, I, I got to know him a little bit and I just added some characteristics like calm, stoic, balanced, smart, business oriented. That's a big one. And this is just to help me kind of get an understanding of who this character is. And if you're doing five or six different interview calls on your documentary, it's always good to have a reference of who you were talking about laid out in your pre-production interview questions. The last section of the interview call that I think is very important to get down is, you know, ask asking them things like what their schedule is during their fight camp. You know, do you have any other person or a coach or anybody that we could add into this document? 
somebody that'd be willing to do an interview or you know be on camera with you because if this is just a documentary about one person and you're only getting one interview it could very quickly get boring so you want to ask them like who else do you have access to or who else would be interested in being in this documentary to speak on your behalf and then the last thing is what do we have access to do we have access to capture footage training in your gym do we have access to getting into the UFC before your fight. What are our limitations? Because that is going to help me understand how to shape this creative and where to take this storyline. Obviously, I'm not gonna take the story all the way up into the UFC if we don't have access to his fight. It's very important to understand your limitations and get that out in front in the very beginning because you don't wanna be caught off guard and you don't want any surprises waiting for you at the end of your filmmaking. Now, after I have my pre-interviews done, my next step is to start writing a script or an outline for my documentary. And that's a lot to get into in this video. I actually broke down an entire video going through the whole entire process of writing a script and an outline. And if you guys wanna check that out, I'll leave a link right up here. Now, the general idea of a script or an outline is to basically play the story out the way you think it's going to go down. Now, this is a really fine line between having a script and an outline as a guideline and using it as something that feels like a scripted documentary. I suggest never to have something feel super scripted or strictly follow your script or outline. I think it should be used more as a guide to give you a direction on how you should shape this story. But ultimately you have to be flexible, right? Because you could ask your interviewee questions and they could answer it in a way where you had no idea that they were gonna answer that or give you answers that you're surprised by and you feel like, wow, that entire entirely changed the landscape of this story and where we're going to take this story. So I think it's important to use a script as a guide, but just remember to be as flexible as possible and definitely check out that video on how to write a documentary script. I think it really breaks down every aspect of that and goes into detail on character and story development that I feel like filmmakers could greatly benefit from. So definitely check that out. Now that we've kind of gone over the script and the outline, the idea for the interview questions is to almost reverse engineer the story or the script, right? This is why I think it's so important to do the script before your interview questions, because you'll have an understanding of where you want to take this story. Again, you got to be careful on being way too scripted and making it sound like you're just feeding them answers because you don't want to do that. Rather, you want to give interview questions that are going to be conducive to a to an actual storyline, not just random questions. And you know, a lot of people just ask like, hey, what's your name and what do you do? Who cares, man? Like, honestly, like that's not going to help you tell your story. Like you have to ask questions about who this person is, how they got to where they wanted to go, why they failed, why they succeeded. Those are some of the biggest questions and some of the biggest driving points behind your story. And asking them questions like that generates really good authentic responses. And those are the kind of questions that I think that you guys need to ask yourselves. But the idea here is to get to those deeper interview questions. And I like to label out my interview questions by person. And I have a specific set of questions for every person in my documentary. And I think that that's extremely important. You definitely don't want to ask the same questions to every person. Every person needs a tailored set of interview questions. So the next step in my process is to build the world of my film by using a mood board. And think of a mood board like a stylistic direction for your film. These are gonna answer some of the things like music, lighting, angles, cinematography. You're kind of gonna give this general understanding of the world that you're creating, right? And, and a big reason for this is not just for yourself, but it's also for your crew. I think it's very important as a director or a cinematographer to start building this to send to your gaffer, your, your cinematographers or your camera operators, and even your production assistants to really get on board with the creative vision that you have for the project. So coming into my mood board I always start with music and that's because I really feel like there's no better way to start building your world than creating the sound for your world and to create the sound for my world I've been using music bed for years now and I think that there is no match for the quality that you get on music bed they have real artists and real composers that create amazing and diverse tracks that I have admired for years and have been a cornerstone in my filmmaking for such a long time. But recently I have been lucky enough to partner with them and have my own playlist on Musicbed, which I am 
super happy and thankful for because this has truly been a, a company that I stand behind for years. And I would definitely go and suggest checking them out if you don't know about Musicbed. For me, it is by far the best music library on the internet. And like I said, guys, they are a little bit pricey and expensive, but in my opinion, it's so worth it because there's not a price that you could put on elevating your creativity. So when we talk about music, there's a few things that I look out for when choosing the music for my films. I like to make sure that I have the different moods set out and I look at my outline as a whole and I looked at and I look at my script and I start to try to find music that kind of fits that general theme and that idea. I also think that it's so important to kind of set rules and build this world that you have and the rules that I set for my film for the music is on the ambient side, electronic and staying away from organic stuff. I wanted it to feel modern. I wanted it to feel a little aggressive at times, a little soft at times. But ultimately, I wanted just a bed of music that would just kind of not be so overbearing or so much like you notice the music, but you kind of just feel the music. And that's something very important that you have to think about. Like, what are the rules for the music in your film? Do you want to go super organic and orchestral? Do you want to go more folky? Do you want it to have like a hip hop and urban vibe? It's really important for you to think about that and kind of keep it within the same kind of vibe and genre. So the next section I have are interview angles. I think that it's really important for your mood board, for me at least, I don't have to have things be exact. I just need to have it within the same realm of things that I'm trying to capture. Now for the interview angles, I like to have my wide shots kind of given out to me. As you can see right here on the left, this is like a super wide shot. And then on the right, this is more of like a medium shot. So if I want to show an entire area of a room or a house, I like the angle of the second camera to be a little bit higher than my subject's eye line. It's just a preference that I have. It's just what I like. Again, you guys can do with that what you will. Moving on to lighting. I have two sets of lighting here. I have a moody look and I have a natural look. In my last documentary, I shot something in a house that was really bright and that had a ton of windows and it would have taken way too long to cover up all the windows or to make that interview super moody. So I had, I was kind of forced to go with a lighting that was a little bit natural looking, which is okay. But when I was on set, I didn't have the option of a reference of a natural look. So from now on, I've decided to give myself a moody look and a natural look. And these are the two different looks that I would go for if I can control the lighting, I'm going to go with this kind of a moodier look. And if I can't control the lighting, I'm going to go with a more natural look like this for the lighting. Now, I think color and tone is so important because it's going to tell you what your character should be wearing in your frame. And then also tell your colorist what kind of direction you want to take this into. And even for your cinematographer, or if you're doing the cinematography, you could have something to reference like, do you want something to feel a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer? How do you want this lighting to look? Your storyboard is different from the mood board because this has to have a little bit more of a solid storyline to the images of what it is that you're doing. This is literally kind of mapping out the idea of your entire story. Again, this stuff is just to give you a good idea how one shot leads into the next and how you can kind of start to understand in your mind how the edit is going to play out. This helps in so many different ways. It helps with production because while you're shooting something, you know that this section of the film is going to lead into this section of the film. And then as you're kind of going through this storyboard and seeing how all these shots fit together, you start to answer some questions like, nah, this, this won't transition well. So it just gives you a better understanding of how you should film things. And then when you go to edit, it becomes very, very easy to, to lay all this stuff out because you already did that on paper. Getting into one of the most important aspects of pre-production is your shot list. I think that there's a couple of things that you have to have on your shot list. I think some reference photos is very important. I think it's important to have three columns to this shot list. Shots required, focal length, and frame rate. This to me, and it might not be helpful to everybody, but for me, it's extremely helpful because this tells me that I want a look on a 50 millimeter, a look on a 24 millimeter, and then I want something super compressed on an 85 millimeter. And then it even tells me that I want something in 24 frames, and I want something in 60 frames just in case I might wanna slow this down. 
Moving on to the final thing, and that is the shooting schedule. And I have a separate schedule for every single day. So if you go into day one, I'm still in pre-production for this and I don't have the schedule built out yet, but this is what normally what it would look like. I'll have my locations, I'll have my cast and crew members, just so I know exactly who's supposed to show up on what day. And then I'll have my shot one, which I know we're gonna be in the gym. I'm gonna have the date, the time, the location, and what kind of style of, of shooting is this? While you're doing your scheduling, it's extremely important to think about all the different shots that you need in a specific location. So if we're gonna shoot interviews in his house, I'm gonna get all the house stuff of him waking up and you know brushing his teeth or having breakfast or hanging out with his family. I'm gonna get all of that stuff in one day. I'm gonna schedule all of that in one day, even though that they're supposed to be on separate days. Think about scheduling in that way so you could be a lot more efficient in your production schedule. This was a general outlook of our pre-production process for documentary filmmaking. We are in the process of coming out with a course that breaks down every step from pre-production to post-production and even selling your films to major streaming platforms. And if you guys wanna sign up to be notified as soon as that course drops, I'm gonna leave a link down below so you guys can sign up for that documentary course. And if you guys have anything that you have trouble with or you struggle with, please leave them in the comments down below. I try to get to every single comment that is on this YouTube channel. I might miss some stuff, but I try to get to a lot of stuff, especially when it pertains to documentary filmmaking. So thank you so much for watching guys and hanging out with me talking about pre-production for documentary filmmaking and i will see you guys in the next one deuces